I think it's really cool how Bell and Ross have pivoted from making watches that look more like something you'd see in the cockpit of a Lancaster bomber to making something like this, which is every inch the modern high-end luxury watch. And with that case shape and the screws in each corner, it's unmistakably a Bell and Ross. I mean, that's really clever design. So if you're new to the channel, my name's Simon and I like to talk about watches. And I'm really pleased to say that the channel recently passed the 3000 subscriber mark. And I'd be hugely grateful if you could hit that subscribe button too. So Bell & Ross isn't a brand that I've got a lot of experience with. I've never owned one, but I always quite liked those big black square aviation inspired watches, but they were always a bit too big for my skinny wrists. But then a mate of mine asked me what I thought of the BR05 Carbon Orange. And when I did a deep dive into the BR05 series, I realized that this was a Bell & Ross that I could actually wear. I reached out to the brand to see if they could send me the Carbon Orange to check out on the channel. And while they didn't have a press sample available, they did kindly give me a choice of other models. So I opted to take a look at this, which is one of their skeletonized versions. The BR05 Skeleton Golden uses the same familiar case shape as the rest of the BR05 series, with a circular dial inside a 40 mm square case with radius corners and an integrated strap. The case on this one is stainless steel, which is mostly brushed, but it has polished chamfers. It's a solid feeling hunk of metal too, but it's actually not that heavy on this rubber strap, weighing in at 125 grams. And whereas with my 6.5 inch wrists I often struggle with a lot of watches with integrated straps, the lug to lug measurement on this one is a relatively modest 47 millimeters. And this pretty compact size also really helps with wearability. It's not a thick watch either. I measure it at just over 10 millimeters. I think the specifications say 10.3, so it'll easily slip under a shirt cuff. On the raised bezel you've got screws in each corner, and flanking either side of the screw down crown, which gives it 100 meters of water resistance, you've got these long rectangular crown guards, which also appear to be screwed onto the case. I think it's really cool how Bell & Ross have pivoted from making watches that look more like something you'd see in the cockpit of a Lancaster bomber, to making something like this, which is every inch the modern high-end luxury watch. And with that case shape and the screws in each corner, it's unmistakably a Bell & Ross. I mean, that's really clever design. Skeletonized dials are a bit divisive, but if you've been following the channel, you know that I'm quite partial to them. With this one, the movement is visible through an amber-tinted sapphire dial, which has a Bell & Ross logo printed onto it in gold, and the baton indices are inset into an angled gold rehort. It's a similar principle to how the indices are inset into the chapter ring of the Tudor Pelagos. You can also see the movement through the exhibition case back, and the rotor has been cut away and looks almost like an alloy wheel. And they've also minimized the size of the bridge plates so that through the spokes of that rotor, you can actually see right through this watch. The movement itself is the Bell & Ross Calibre 322, which is an automatic movement with a 38 hour power reserve. And it's based on the Salita SW300-1. As I mentioned earlier, this one has a rubber strap with a folding brushed stainless steel clasp. However, it's also available on a bracelet. It's a limited edition of just 500 pieces, and the price here in the UK is £6,000, or about $7,500 if you're on that side of the pond. Now there's a lot to like about this watch. I've been wearing it for the last few days, and I really like the shape of the case, and how it feels on the wrist. And while I like how this one wears, that carbon orange version that I mentioned at the beginning, must weigh almost nothing, and I bet that wears incredibly well. Any complaints? Well, while the clasp on this one feels really solid and well made, in fact it reminds me a bit of the clasp on that Doxa Sub 600 that I used to own, the strap in comparison, well, feels a little cheap. It's supple enough and moulds really well to the wrist, but I've had much better quality rubber straps on watches that cost a lot less than £6,000. I also think it would have been nice to have had some more interesting mouldings on the strap, rather than this groove design which is just a little generic. Operating the crown is also a bit unusual. 
It screws down to give this watch 100 meters of water resistance, and while unscrewing it is fine, trying to then pull it out to set the time takes so much force that you almost wonder if you're going to break the stem. I mean, it might just be that this one is a little stiff, and others might be just fine. And while this watch looks like a million dollars, I struggle a little with that 6k price tag for a watch that uses a Solita base movement with pretty average specs. It feels like you're paying a premium for the Bell & Ross brand, but it is a brand that has cachet, and I suspect there are enough people out there who will pay that amount of money for this watch, because they love the way it looks and it has that name on the dial. But guys, what do you think? Tell me in the comments and let me know which other brands you'd like to see on the channel. Oh, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you want to see more videos like this.